Okay, everyone, I've had several people ask me for some additional information for the yard signs. So I want to be helpful and support any way that I can. Every number, of course, is going to be different, so you'll have to be creative. So he's going to basically give you the um, basics. Good afternoon. First thing I'm going to do is show you the tools that I'm using uh, so that when I refer to it, you'll know what I'm talking about. What you have on the ground here is the number six. Uh, it's basically made up of half inch EMT. EMT you will find in your hardware stores in the electrical aisles. It is used for electrical wiring, running wires through it. Uh, this is again half inch. The other thing that you're going to see that I have are connectors. I'm using PVC connectors. Okay, even though I have metal pipe, I'm using PVC connectors. All right, so again, here is your half inch 11, uh, 10 foot EMT pole. I'm going to talk about a couple different ways to put this in the ground. This is EMT also, but it's three quarter. The reason that it's three quarter is because my half inch will go directly inside of that three quarter. So I'm going to show you two different ways of putting it in the ground. The other method is going to be using a piece of rebar and you can decide which one you'll like and I'll tell you why I like one versus the other. This is your pipe bender. It's going to be very difficult to bend this EMT into your number and get the shapes. This is again when you get the your pipe bender you're going to get either a three quarter or a half inch at the store. This is all I'm bending is half inch. So you're going to want a half inch pipe bender. This runs about $30, $35 at Lowe's and Home Depot. I'm also going to be using a drill. And you can use a regular screwdriver if you want, but it makes it a lot easier if you're using a, a bit that either goes in a regular drill. You can use one drill. I just It's just easier so I don't have to take the bits in and out. I need a nice big hammer. I'd actually like to have one bigger than this. They, they, if you want to get a maul, has a big head on it, that'll be easier to drive your pipe in the ground. I have a measuring tape of any type you wish. I prefer the white duct tape, but any duct tape will do. As a matter of fact, silver duct tape will match your piping. The screws that I'm going to be talking about are self-tapping screws. They'll be in the metal or sheet metal screws uh, in your hardware section of your hardware store. Uh, I'm using at this point right here, I have number eights, three quarters of an inch long. This allows it to go through one side of a connector into the pipe or from one pipe into another pipe. So you, the length is important and three quarter inch is what you're going to want to use. The other thing that you're going to need is a pipe cutter. They'll sell these in the plumbing section at your hardware stores. You can get them in a couple different types. You can even get a real small one. This is a kind of a medium size. Uh, they actually don't last forever. So I would get a decent one. That'll help you last a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm having problems cutting with this one now. But I have another one. I have a backup. The other thing I may refer to some type of nails. This happens to be a paneling nail, but it really doesn't matter what you use. I'm going to tell you and reference this a little bit later, but I do have some nails that I'm going to reference. So in, in making this particular shape, I knew that I had to bend in some kind of a circle. So when I started, um, I kind of did one, I, I probably ruined two different 10 foot poles trying to figure out what I was actually going to going to do and get get done. What I decided was that I really needed a pattern to make these circles. So I don't know if you can see my mark on here that I made in magic marker, but I'm actually for these and I'm actually going to scale these down a little bit. These numbers end up being about six and a half feet long. If you want a smaller one, what you're going to do is you're going to change these numbers. I'm marking these off every seven inches and that's where I'm making the bends. If I had to tell you how I was making this bend, I would say that I was making it at about a 20 degree angle. 
So basically what's going to happen is you put the pipe in like that. You're going to have, there's an arrow on here. You're going to mark that up with your marks, match that up with your mark on your pipe in terms of your magic marker. And then basically what you do is you just step right on that. Now, again, I'm coming up about 20 degrees. There really is no rhyme or reason. You'll get the idea when you, when you, you know, as you do some of this. And that starts making that bend right there. And then I would move down to the next seven inch mark. I would make another bend. That's what's going to form your circles. You still have, let's say I get this six bent out and you know, when you're making these bends, there's no accurate in terms of, you can look on the side, on the side of these, it does give you some angles. It does give you some kind of an idea that you can follow, but I'm kind of playing it by eye because when I, when I have this circle done, before I make the connection, I can still bend it and reshape it a little bit. If I need it bent a little bit more one way, you still have the capability once you make all these other bends to kind of form it the way you want. So what I decided here, believe it or not, this is almost, just the loop right there is almost a 10 foot piece. There's a little bit cut off, so I really had to use two pieces. So I decided I was gonna go straight up and curve around here. So I have a connection here, this is called a T. Now I have found, since I did this one, I have found a little bit of a better connector that I prefer to use. You can get connectors. The two main ones you're gonna use are called T's and, and couplers. T's and couplers. And I just wanna show you the difference here between something. All right. Now you can get a coupler and if you look inside of here, here's the difference. See the difference between that coupler and that one? This one is threaded, okay? This one is not threaded. I don't know if you can see the difference there. What happens is that when I put the coupler inside of here, you see all the play that I have? When I put it inside the one that's threaded, it is a lot less play, it fits a lot tighter. I'm going to take a hammer and gently bound, pound, bound, uh, pound on that end and shove it on there. And then basically what I do is I make a screw in all four directions, east, west, north, south. I put a screw in here, drill a hole through the pipe, put in my self-tapping screw here, 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 and here. Again, four quadrants or east, north, west, south. So they're opposite of each other. You got to make sure you move up or down a little bit so that you don't run the screws into the same screw on the other side. In other words, you gotta alternate. If I put a hole here, I might move up a little bit when I put the hole on the other side, okay? Now, unfortunately, with the T's, that's a T that, that does not have any threads. You see all the play that's there. It's kind of loose. They do sell a, th a, a T that has a thread on one side, but you can't get one that's threaded in all three directions. I don't know why, but I just can't find one that way. I wish I could. Again, threads that fit better. I still like to use the one that has one thread because that's the one right here that's gonna be the piece that goes into the ground. That's kind of your main support. If you have failure here, then your, then your sign's gonna lean, okay? It's really gonna lean. So that threaded part's gonna give me the better connection down there. Now, what I do for this area right here, when I make those connections, I take some of these nails, before I drill my holes, I take some nails and I put the nails in like that, on that side and on that side. And what it does is it kind of gives me an even gap around there and I do it all around. I try to get four of them in there and once you get a couple of them in, it actually works better for them to stay in place. So what it does is kind of fill that gap. You can use scrap pieces of metal if you have, like some, like don't fall, if you have some pieces of sheet metal, you could shove a piece of sheet metal in there. You could actually put like a small wood shim in there. Anything that's gonna close that gap up and then go ahead and put your screws in is gonna help you because you really don't want that play. If you screw it in and then you tape it, it works okay, but I'm finding it works a lot better if I try to fill that gap up. And unfortunately, I can't find anything that, that gives you a better fit right there. So again, here is a real key point. 
I need that T right there at the bottom of that arc. If you wait to try to put the T in after you bend that whole arc, you're never going to get it on because it won't get past these points that are curved. So you have to have an idea of where it's going to go. And you have to, in other words, if I'm bending from here, I bend them all the way around to here. When I get to this bend, I put the T on the straight piece and leave it there. And then I go ahead and make my next bend. If you don't put it on before you bend that complete circle, you will not get it on. Now, for straight pieces like this, I don't have to worry about it because I can put it on after I did that. So as you can see, I have a straight piece here that connects the top and the bottom, and then I had this piece. Now I had to get a little fancy here because I had to be able to get this curved piece that was curving this way. I had to make a little curve that way so it'll fit in that hole right there on that T. So again, some of it's a little ingenuity. Most of it is just playing around with it. Be prepared to waste a couple of these pieces of EMT that cost you $3, $3.50 a piece to be able to get the hang of using that pipe bender. Couple last minute thoughts. Uh, one thing that you definitely want to do because you're wrapping this whole thing with balloons, when you have these screw heads here, that's the reason I have this duct tape. You're going to want to go ahead and take the duct tape and wrap it around those. Number one, it helps secure your joints. Number two, the biggest thing you're trying to do is to make sure that these threads are not going to pop your balloons and, and little pieces of the metal. So I just put a tape around that whole connection right there on all three sides. I do the same thing down here at the bottom. Okay? So once you have that in, and you'll see how I screwed that, not only did I screw it in the east, north, west, and south here, but I have two on this side up here, and I have two more on the other side over here. That's what's going to strengthen your connections. Don't be afraid to put the screws in it. If you just try to do it with one or two screws, then you're going to have stuff that's loose. So here are your options now when you're ready to put this in the ground. You can take... You can take a piece of rebar. This is half inch rebar. Now I have found personally, and maybe it's all gonna depend on your store. It's all gonna depend on the stock that they have available. But what I'm suggesting is, suggesting is, is that you check before you leave the store. You wanna make sure that this rebar fits inside of that EMT if you're gonna use rebar. I have found that some stores, it fits perfect. Other stores, they have like an edge that comes out, even though it's half inch, and it does not fit in there. You're going to find some of these have ends that are a little bit more messed up than the other. If it's messed up on one end, that's the one you're going to put in the ground. As long as you have one end that your pipe will slide on, that's fine. I just don't want you to buy a rebar and then get home and not be able to use it. So you can drive that piece of rebar down into the ground, and then go ahead and slide your pole right over top of that. Now, if you notice here, this is a little, this is higher. I have since made it a little bit closer to the ground because it's going to stick out of the ground that much. The reason for that is if you make it so it's only that big, it only has that much pole to hold on to, and the wind is going to lift that right off your rebar. That's one of the reasons I don't like rebar with the big numbers. We do use these for other designs. If I'm just putting a topiary on top of a pole, I use rebar most of the time. If I'm just putting, if we're putting uh, 42 inch um, foil letters up, I use rebar, I put a pipe over it, we tape the letters right to the, to the rebar. We use two poles for each letter, works great. But for these bigger numbers, my preference is to use a three quarter inch EMT. That's what I drive into the ground. If I were you, I would pre-drill two holes, a hole on this side and a hole on that side. It's a lot easier when you get to the site if you have these two holes pre-drilled already. Two holes, one on each side, that's all we need. What you're gonna do, you're gonna get to your site, you're gonna select your location, you're gonna take the, the three-quarter, drive it into the ground. My general rule is I like to try to drive it into the ground about 18 inches. Most of my pieces that I'm using now are about a foot long. So if you take a foot and you take 18 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, 
you want a piece here that's probably about 28 inches long. Is that right? No, that's not right. That's 30 inches long. <laughs> and I, I actually teach math. 30 inches long. Drive that into the ground. I actually use this side of the hammer when I'm doing this as opposed to this one. What you don't want to do, you don't want to deform the top of it. You don't want to bang on that and, and so that now the pipe doesn't fit inside of it. You got to be very careful of that. Okay, you might want to take a pair of pliers with you because if you mess up that opening, you can always kind of bend it out and so your pipe can then stick inside of it. Now, here's the reason that I like to use this. This goes into the ground and then if this were the bottom of my sign, I would be able to sit that right inside of there. Okay. Now, what happens with these and the same thing happens on a piece of rebar is that I have these even in a, even in a small wind these things are just going to spin around so your numbers are going to spin freely that's the reason that i had pre-drilled two holes because what i do when i get on site is i take my drill and i go to that pre-drilled hole right there once i have my number lined up the way i want and i drill the hole into the second pipe then i take my screw and put a screw in there drill the hole on the other side through to the other pipe and you can't really, you won't know that until you get to your site. So that's why you got to drill this at this last hole at the site. Then put your screw in. What that does is it helps to stop it from moving. Now, from experience, I learned today that the ground, we put one up in the rain. And the ground was so wet that even the pipe I put in the ground started spinning. If that's the case, and a lot of people do this as well, you would need to tether this to the ground. In most cases, you only have to tether it two places. I would take a piece of string and just tie a piece of string between my balloons right here. I would run the, the, st the string down to a tent stake is the best thing. You can get those at your hardware store also. Some kind of a tent stake, some kind of a ground stake. It only needs to be about six, eight inches long. You tie the string around the other side real tight and you hammer that thing down into the ground. When you hammer that into the ground, you don't want to put your tent stakes in straight vertical. You want to angle them away from, angle them away from what you're trying to tether. So if I tied it off here and ran it down to a stake, and I tied it off here and ran it down to a stake, and it's nice and tight, it doesn't matter if the wind's blowing it this way or this way, it's going to stay in place because of that. Some people like to put one on one side and one on the other. It doesn't work because if I, if I tie it here that way and tie it here this way, it's still going to spin. So you really need to do your tethering with two on the same side. If you really want to make sure it doesn't move, put two on this side and two on the other side, and that'll guarantee that it doesn't move. I think that I've covered about everything that I need. Don't forget on the end of your pipe to make sure you put either a piece of tape or another balloon before you put them on want anything that's going to pop your balloons when you're in transit so again this is about from the bottom of the six to the top of the six it's about six six and a half feet long if you want a bigger one then instead of seven inches you might want to make it eight inches before you make your bends okay when i do my number eight i did a complete circle that was measured seven inches apart for every bend on the bottom and the top circle is a little smaller. I did it every six inches and it fits together perfectly. At some point in time, when I get my frame back for the number eight, we'll put up another little video and I'll show you how I connected those two circles together. To believe it or not, to me, the number eight is the easiest number to make besides obviously a number one. <laughs> Hope this helps. Alrighty. Thanks, Mark. Bye, y'all.